Hi there, my name is Brian Felt with Worldwide Technology and I'm pleased today to be joined by Charlie Lawhorn, a Worldwide Technology Chief Digital Advisor. Today we're talking about digital transformation in the wake of COVID-19 and how businesses of any kind should be thinking about approaching customers, partners, and employees when it comes to resuming operations and what will become uh, the eventual new normal for us. Charlie, thanks for, thanks for joining today. Sure, thanks for having me. So at the top, I mentioned, you know, new normal, and that's a term that's being thrown around a lot these days by a lot of different people. So it probably carries a lot of uh, different meanings of according to whatever group you're talking to. But understanding that it's that it's a very fluid situation. And from our own perspective, what will the new normal be for companies as they look to, to reopen and, and reengage with their, their customers or employees? Gosh, it's it's a broad question, Brian. Um, I think it depends on what industry you're in, what Part of the country or world you're in. I think we're all going through different phases of, of this together. Um, different parts are, are on the back end now starting to open up a bit more. Other parts are just starting to close down. Um, I, I think from a normal perspective or new normal, um, a lot of it is about safety and security. And I think for customers, that's been their, their first priority. Uh, for employees and employers, that's been a, a big priority as well. I know we've done a ton of work here at Worldwide to ensure the, the safety of our own teams, uh, making sure that they have access to the right tools and procedures and those types of things. I, I think businesses are trying to do the same with customers. Uh, governments are, are trying to push and enforce policies uh, that drive certain behaviors or change certain behaviors. Uh, the push to, to basically shut everything down and make it all a, a remote model, uh, remote healthcare, remote retail, where I, I order online and I, I pick it up at the curb, those types of things. We, we've seen a ton of that. Um, I, I think it'll be interesting as we talk about kind of the new normal and what's next, Brian, what uh, what's going to stick and what's not, uh, which of these inconveniences are, are now conveniences as things change. So obviously digital transformation took a giant kind of leap forward overnight and every company had to rush to um, accommodate itself in whatever way it could. What are we learning now about digital transformation that maybe we didn't know, um, you know, just a few months ago? Uh, you know, I was thinking about this earlier that for years we've been using technology to push consumers or to change behaviors, to drive new patterns, new modes of consumption, new modes of working. Um, what's interesting is over the last month, behaviors changed. And so technology had to jump and catch up very quickly. Uh, a lot of people weren't prepared, businesses and companies weren't prepared for employees to work from home the way that we are. A lot of uh, retail or restaurant or healthcare, they weren't ready for the remoteness of their customers or their patients and, and how could they keep the lights on and, and keep revenue flowing. Uh, on the rev on the business side, where in the healthcare side, it was just a, a mass movement of people to get pre-screened before you got to a doctor's office or to a hospital. So we worked with you know some interesting state and local governments on pre-screening. Uh, we worked with a lot of hospitals and healthcare providers on remote temperature scanning and monitoring to, to check people before they got to a facility. Um, once they're at a facility, new procedures in place. Um, so it's really it's really spanned pretty much every industry and every technology that we have. Um, it's been interesting. You know, I've got two kids that uh, are, are being homeschooled now that we, we never thought we'd be homeschooling, but we're I won't say we're succeeding, but we're trying. I uh, never never thought I'd be a principal of a, a middle school, but I'm, I'm trying to be a principal of a middle school right now, too. And uh, it's, it's been interesting to, to deal with this and, and to watch how much digital plays a part of all of these changes for for everybody. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned kind of having, you know, two kids at home and never thought you'd be a principal. And I'm sure you're doing a fantastic job in that regard. But, um, you know, on the flip side, uh, you know, the real world principals are having to make decisions now about, like you said, what is the new normal? What um, what types of uh, new technologies are going to be enabled by this type of uh, movement moving forward? So where do you see those decisions and what types of questions are, are different organizations or, or um, you know, schools having to make right now? How as we as we get through this, you know, first and foremost, again, it's about the safety safety of their their teachers, their staff, their their parents, the the students, uh, all of the above. Um, it's it's a challenging time depending on what part of education you're in. 
Uh, if you're in early childhood or, or younger, you know, grade school, it's, it's been one set of behaviors. Uh, if you're kind of middle school and up, you've been forced to understand and, and, and build out your own calendar, your own schedule, your own management of, of how you take classes and how you do your work. I know my boys are 12 and 13, so they're going through that. And it's almost like being in college. They've, they've been forced, they, they get assignments at the beginning of the week and they have to figure out how to get them done. And, and we try to help them as much as we can with as much structure as we can put on it. Um, but in, in the education space, as we move into you know the, the higher ed, I, I think we're gonna see some big changes. I think students are, are getting comfortable or semi-comfortable with remote learning. I think that's gonna have an impact on um, attendance and you know admissions going into higher ed as, as we look at that going forward. I, I think some people will see this inconvenience as something that's passable or even likable, depending on different circumstances. What about restaurants? I know we do a lot of work um, with restaurants and certainly that's a very tangible um, effect that probably everybody across the, the nation and world is dealing with. Are we going to see curbside stick around? Certainly online ordering is going to be um, a much more prevalent uh, thing moving forward, but what is the shift like there? Yeah, I, I think restaurants have notoriously as an industry, they were about service and hospitality, not necessarily about technology. Most restaurants, uh, even the big chains had, had started to try and figure out carry out and curbside and delivery. Uh, but now everyone down to the mom and pop is, has had to figure this out. Um, I, I do think that a lot of these, you know, what were or are inconveniences are going to become just mainstay standards. I think curbside is probably here to stay in the restaurant space. Um, definitely, you know, we've been helping customers figure out uh, delivery and, and carry out and, and kind of how to bring digital orders from online ordering into your kitchen and how that fits in line with your restaurant to, uh, staff to make sure you have the right capacity so that you can serve your customers that are dining in and the ones that are now carrying out or doing delivery. So we've seen a lot of that over the last couple of years. Some of our customers are, are much further down that path and have had some great success during uh, the challenges that we're going through right now. We've got a couple that had deployed some great digital technologies around contactless pickup to where when you walk in, if your app is open, you can walk straight up to an oven and, and you know digitally open it and grab your order. You feel safe. You know that nobody's really been able to touch it or it's not been handled by anyone. And I can grab it and go without actually having to touch money or, or deal with you know one of the employees taking off gloves and, and, and then retouching food. So we've had some great successes in the middle of all of this. Um, and I think we'll see a lot more of those types of technologies deployed in the restaurant space over the next over the next couple of years. Yeah. Is there lessons to be learned there for other industries as well or even, you know, corporate America mm -hmm. um, in terms of, uh, I guess, these companies or, or retailers or any industry is going to have to completely relearn their customers or relearn how their employees uh, are comfortable or would like to collaborate? Yeah, I, I think so. I think, you know, in the world of digital, we talk a lot about personas or or the situations that customers go through. And I think now we have a new set of situations and a new set of behaviors that we have to understand. I think coming out of this, customers are going to be, you know, some customers are ready to get out and, and go and, and let me get back to my old life. I don't think that's the majority of people. I think it's, it's going to be a slow crawl, walk, run back into some level of normalcy. Um, I, I you know, I'm not necessarily ready to go jump in, sit in a restaurant with, you know, a thousand other people with my family yet. Um, but I may go sit in a smaller restaurant that's not going to have a, a big crowd. I, I'm, I'm definitely not ready to go wait in queues and lines in certain big venues uh, or events. But yet, if they were to, if those events were to talk about how they can manage crowd control, how they could maybe order food ahead so that I can bypass lines. I think there are a lot of, you know, convenient type solutions that we've talked about in the past with organizations that are going to need to become normal so that customers are, are comfortable coming back to, to, to either work or to, to be a customer. Yeah, I guess a lot of the stuff that we've heard, you know, in terms of digital transformation uh, encompasses making things more seamless experience. Um, and maybe now we, we pivot or at least have another sidebar aspect that talks about being more transparent in how you're handling things, whether it's crowd control um, or just in the way you're cleaning your facilities or, or things like that. Yeah, I think I think communication is going to be critical. I, I think companies are going to have to overly communicate to their employees and to their customers what measures they're taking around safety. Um, I, I think 
cleanliness. You know, we're watching it, at least I travel quite a bit, so I'm watching the airlines trying to communicate. I'm watching the hotels trying to communicate about the measures they're taking, the policies they're putting in place. The, the challenge is there's, there's not always a right answer. There's not a wrong answer. Um, so there's a lot of ex experimentation happening right now around what are those tolerances that, that customers will deal with. Uh, we've seen some interesting things in the media around people wanting to push back against some of the safety measures. Um, they feel it's infringing too much on their rights. So I, I think we're going to be in that testing ground of what's okay and what's not, what's acceptable, what's doable for, for the next six to nine to 12 months. So certainly we've been in communication with many of our customers um, across a variety of sectors and helping them navigate these, these challenging circumstances. And we've kind of seen customers in three different um, sectors, if you will, you know, a quick reaction phase, a stabilization phase, and, and a kind of a what's next look forward phase. Um, in your experience in those talks, what have been some of the best practices deployed to, to help not only get through this type of uh, challenging times, but to, uh, you know, thrive or, or be a little bit more successful than their peers? And, and what are some of the challenges or pitfalls that, that organizations are experiencing? You know, in the kind of quick reaction of, you know, how do I keep my business afloat? I think a lot of companies have deployed maybe non-scalable solutions. We saw a rush to certain video conferencing tools. We saw a rush to uh, signing up for these cool online tools and SaaS, everything. I, I think those come with a cost. I, I think that it worked well to get things moving, but it may not be the right long-term solution for a lot of our customers. Um, so I, I think that people reacting quickly to keep the lights on and keep things moving and to keep continuity as best as possible is great. I think that now we're a few weeks in, depending on where you are in the world, maybe even a couple of months in, and companies are starting to evaluate whether or not those tools that they've deployed are the right tools long-term. And I think in the what's next kind of phase coming out of this, I think they're starting to, to realize that some things can go and go back to normal and some things need to be invested in or changed. Uh, we're watching a lot of our retail customers think that curbside is, is going to stay. It's a convenience that, that helps in rain or heat or snow. It's a convenience that helps if you you know need some, need some help. You've got your kids in the car and the, they're crying and you're trying to get home and please target, throw everything in my trunk. I would love that to happen, right? So I think some of these conveniences will, will definitely stay and we'll see you know a lot of the uh, businesses trying to deploy the correct technologies that can scale to support these types of behaviors. I, I also think that we'll, we'll go through another phase of planning for the next challenge. Um, this has certainly caught a lot of people off guard, but these types of events do happen, weather events and um, other events like that. So I think you'll see people starting to get into a different type of preparedness for the next thing that may or may not happen in the next year or five. Yeah, that kind of leads me into my next question there, too, is how can companies, whether it's a restaurant or a retailer, or a large manufacturer, you know, pick your pick your company, how can they leverage some of the best practices that you just went over or avoid some of the, the pitfalls uh, to deliver those quick incremental wins now so that they're moving forward and progressing, but at the same time, starting to lay the groundwork for, you know, a, a successful plan moving forward? You know, it's interesting. We talked about at the beginning how you know digital for a long time was about changing behavior. Now behavior has changed digital a bit. Uh, I think that it's it's time to reassess some of the strategy, specifically around digital and, and technology. Uh, I, I think people need to and businesses need to spend quite a bit of time reevaluating their path forward, uh, what they had lined up as or earmarked for key investments in infrastructure probably need to be revised. Uh, applications to, to drive different experiences, either, you know, customer experiences, patient experiences, employee experiences. I think a lot of those are, are, are need to be reevaluated as well. I know I'm working closely with like our collaboration team on digital work and, and uh, remote working. And we've watched a lot of companies come out and say that they're probably not going to return everyone back to the office ever. And so we're starting to think about what does that hybrid working environment look like? Um, we've watched other companies say everybody's going to come back, but this week you're on a Tuesday, Thursday schedule, and next week you're on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and, and that way they try and rotate their, their workforce. We, we've seen a little bit of those things. So um, I, I think that preparing for and planning for the return of the customer 
is going to drive a lot of these behaviors. I think, you know, talking to some of my friends that are, you know, small business owners or restaurant owners, they're nervous about bringing their full staff back because they don't know if the customer will be back. And so what, what, does, what are the implications on their business if they're fully staffed, yet there's only 10 carryout orders or 20 carryout orders? So how, how do they manage that and how do they kind of phase that back in is, is a thing that I think pretty much every company is figuring out. But I think on the inverse, we as people and, and customers are trying to figure out how far are we comfortable going? And, and maybe that'll change week by week and you'll get to where you're perfectly comfortable running back into the mall, but I don't see that happening for the next couple of months. What are some, certainly you mentioned this is a fluid situation um, and as it continues to unfold, what are some of the ways that, that we can help um, customers or some other organizations uh, get through this type of stuff? Is it, is it just assessing kind of where they're at in terms of technology or uh, digital strategy, or is it just helping them come to uh, grips and, and more, uh, you know, crystallize their vision on how they want to execute moving forward? I, I would say it's a little bit of all of the above. I mean, the, the real challenge is that behaviors are changing. And so it's time to look at what are the behaviors, what are the new behaviors going to most likely be, and do we have the right tools and processes both in place to, to support those behaviors? So if, if people are more comfortable working remote, then we probably need tech to, to support those things. If people are more comfortable coming back, but they want distancing, then we probably need everything from signage and communication tools to maybe tech to help with distancing. Um, you know, a lot of these challenges are, are tech plus because it's about process change too. And I think that if you look at how we work with most of our customers from the design mindset and, and thinking about that kind of experience or that process perspective, and then applying technology to that, don't, don't think tech first. This isn't a tech issue. This is more of a behavioral and a, a process issue. And then make sure that the right tech is there to shore it up, whether that's apps and tools, whether that's infrastructure and networking and remote connectivity tools, VPN, those types of things. It's really about thinking through the behaviors first and then applying the right technology to, to make sure that you're, you're there to meet that demand. Charlie, those are the only questions I, I had for you today. I appreciate you taking out some time from your busy schedule. And thanks to the viewers for taking interest in the topic. If you have any more interest in anything as it relates to business continuity, we have a series of videos that goes over things such as remote working, collaborative resources, and things of that nature that you can check out. Just do a simple search on WWT.com to access those. Charlie, thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Brian.